2019, the African Union's former permanent representative to the United States, Dr. Arikana Chihombiri Kwao, was recalled from her post. A letter from the AU chair, Musa Faki Mohammed. Uh, to Dr. Uh, Chihombori Kwao, uh, published online, circulated on social media and in reaction. Well, an online petition was launched to demand her reinstatement. Now, in 2020, she is running for the position of AU chair, and she now joins us for a wide-ranging chat about this and other issues. Uh, Your Excellency, thank you so much indeed for joining us, and uh, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. All right, so um, the role of uh, AU Commission Chairperson is up for grabs next year, and you're putting your name in the ring. Why? I am throwing my name in the ring because I found out he is going to be running unopposed, and that's unacceptable. All right, so what is it that uh, you think that you can bring to the party? You were the African Union's uh, ambassador to the United States, so you know the body quite well. Uh, what do you think you can bring to the job? A lot. What is needed at this time, particularly in the environment of the African continental free trade area, uh, we need uh, somebody who is business minded, somebody who can look at Africa as a Fortune 500 company. It's about job creation. It's about seeing to it that the youth unemployment of over 60% is lowered down to, as, to be as under 10%. It's about making sure that the uh, senseless loss of lives uh, from uh, disease and starvation is brought to an end. So we have to manage the African Union like a business. It's about job creation. It's about improving the, uh, the economy. So yes, really uh, we can't keep having career diplomats coming in to head such an institu institution particularly at a time we are talking about economic development all right well some people might say but hang on as uh, an ambassador to the african union you were in some way part of this institution why couldn't you have got things done then actually i did and that was part of the problem because I actually turned an office that was uh, being used as a protocol office into a vibrant, well-established, because part of what we have to also do is rebrand Africa. When I came to Washington, most people were not aware that the African Union even had a mission. So not only did I popularize African Union mission in Washington, D.C., I popularized it all over the United States and around the globe, really, and started talking about the issues that were not being spoken about. So yes, it's about not only rebranding the continent, mobilizing the people together, because at the end of the day, if you're going to improve the economy, you need the masses, you need the people, you need, you need the capacity. And that's what I did. I mobilized the diaspora in a manner that no one has ever mobilized the diaspora before. That's what it's all about. The diaspora will have to play a very important part in the implementation of the continental free trade area. Currently, on the continent, we just don't have the capacity. As we train, a lot of our specialists are leaving the continent. The brain drain has got to be reversed. There's no two ways about it. We have to bring in uh, the diaspora to come and fill in the gap. Whenever I look at uh, a picture of the African Union, particularly when the heads of state uh, gather, uh, one of the things that we don't see often is um, women. And I just wonder if you could talk us through uh, why we don't see so many women in leadership on the continent? Well, I think it's been a problem for, uh, for time immemorial. Us women, we're just there to be, uh, to be, see to be seen in the back. Uh, but that's changing. The African Union now has gender parity 2025, uh, where all the heads of the states agreed that by 2025, uh, most governments should have at least 50-50 uh, uh, parliaments and, and cabinets. Uh, are we going to make it 2025? I doubt it. But certainly, the heads of states are heading in that direction. And, uh, and that is the hope and wish of the African Union, that we reach gender parity by 2025. Certainly, at the African Union, they are doing that. This year, for the first, or no, rather, next year, this coming election is the first time that the AU is mandating that if the chair is a woman, the deputy has to be a man. And the remaining six commissioners, three have to be women and three have to be men. And that in each region, if they have one male, they must have one male commissioner and one female commissioner. No more shall we have 
two male commissioners coming out of one region. So at least from the African Union uh, level, they are, they are really uh, putting their money where their mouth is. All right. So are they ready for a second female uh, uh, chairperson of the uh, commission? Uh, and it's uh, quite soon since the last one. Yes, absolutely. They need to be ready. They better be ready. Uh, it is time for women. And, uh, and as, we, as women, we are ready to, uh, to uh, step up and uh, take the leadership roles. We belong there. Are women stepping forward into these leadership roles? Because it's one thing to enable the vehicles and saying we have these quotas, we have these uh, numbers. But are you seeing women wanting to take up those roles? Not to the extent that we should. So that's something else that we need to work on to keep empowering women, letting them know that they can. We need many more women to step up to the plate. For example, this particular position, I was shocked to realize that uh, he was going to be running unopposed. Uh, the the uh, deputy chairperson was running, was wanting to run for the, for the chair, and I was fine supporting him, but it turned out that he did not get the nomination uh, from his country, and that's why I'm jumping in a little late. Uh, but um, we, we, we simply can, I can't believe that the continent could not come up with more names uh, to run for this position. It's unfortunate, but more of, more of us need to step up and, uh, uh, and start running for these positions. All right, take us through the process of uh, being nominated and then the actual uh, election process itself. What will happen between now and uh, next year? What needs to happen, uh, the deadline to submit an application is September 4th. Uh, two ways to apply. You have to apply through the uh, e-system uh, directly to the African Union. Put your application there just like a regular job application. And then you have to go to your country and your country has to endorse you and then your region has to endorse you. Then they sub submit your name and then uh, that deadline is September 4th. And then after that, it is campaigning up until the elections which are going to be in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, Fe in February. In between, there are going to be debates. I don't know how many debates they're going to have this year, uh, but that is the process. Uh, only the heads of states vote. So it is up to mm. the heads of states as to who they want to be the next year. All right. We're going to talk uh, uh, soon about the African Union and regional bodies and how they function in terms of uh, dealing with issues on the continent. But perhaps to help us get there, you, you've written a book called... Uh, Africa 101, the wake-up call. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what inspired you to write this, because it seems as if you got to a point where you were quite frustrated and there was an urgency for something to be done. When I came to Washington, D.C., what really uh, surprised me the most was uh, the lack of understanding of what was really going on in Africa, not only by the African diaspora, but even the Americans, even some Americans in leadership. Uh, one case that I decided I was going to champion was uh, the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. Uh, this pact uh, was uh, allowing France to take over $500 billion out of Africa every year from 14 countries. I simply could not believe the percentage of people who did not know about this pact. I'm, I'm, I can comfortably say almost 100% of the time when I started speaking to it, most of my audiences had never heard of this pact. And so that lack of understanding of what was really going on in Africa was keeping us as diaspora from doing the right things, from making the right decisions. But also it goes back to our history. It's not just the pact. How did we get to the pact? We talked about what, is, what happened during independence, where we were given only limited political liberation and not economic liberation. People need to understand uh, what is being done to keep Africa where Africa is. Even just the basic understanding of, of uh, the Berlin Conference and the fact that the Berlin Conference is still alive and well today. Most people understood it as a piece of history. No, Berlin Conference is alive today. They divided us up into the tiny little economies, so we are easy to destabilize. We are easy to to uh, to um, to continue to exploit, and and so until we come together as one Africa, which is what the Pan African Fathers were looking to do back in 1963, we are going to continue to be chasing our tails as the small little economies. Which is why I would hope that people can understand 
the importance of the African continental free trade area as a monumental decision from our African heads of states. They really threw a, a home run on this one. And people must understand the significance of it and must understand why everyone must support the African continental free trade area. But also with that understanding comes the realization that at the African Union level, it can no longer continue to be business as usual where you have career diplomats who have no business understanding of what it takes to improve the economy of a nation, to improve the GDP of a continent. That there has to be change at the African Union. And we have to be very clear about that. So the book is talking about our history, helping us go through the process of understanding ourselves why are we where we are as black people? Why do we think the way we think as black people? Because it is only when we are fully awoke, it is only when we are fully awake and we understand what has been done to us, that when we go to that boardroom, that our decisions are going to be reflective of the Pan-African spirit that we are looking for. When you go into the boardroom with a colonized mind, garbage in, garbage out. So the book is called Africa 101, The Wake Up Call. It is a book that I hope everybody can read and we all need to wake up and heal from this disease of the legacy of colonization.